is there a supernatural dimension? A world beyond the one we know? Is there life after death? Do angels exist? Can our dreams contain messages from heaven? Can we tap into ancient secrets of the supernatural? Are healing miracles real? Sid Roth has spent over 35 years researching the strange world of the supernatural. Join Sid for this edition of It's Supernatural. Sid Roth here, welcome. Welcome to my world where it's naturally supernatural. My guest had a tragedy. His young son, no hope, no brain activity. He had no chance. And my guest wasn't, well, he was a believer, but kind of backslidden. And he figured he didn't even have the right to go to God. But Jesus appeared to him. And the presence of God came on him. And he went into the hospital and he had a great miracle. And every time he shares about this miracle, that same presence goes on others. Get ready. What, what a way to start life. The little baby. And his grandmother takes him to a meeting. And an evangelist, lay, as he's a baby, lays hands on him. And what did he prophesy? He prophesied that I'd be used in the end times for revival, that I would see uh, great things come to pass when I prayed for people. And uh, that led to, as I grew older, to begin to have the dreams. And what did, were your dreams about? My dreams were always the same dream every time I was in uh, great crowds of people. They were reaching out to me, many of them at many stadiums, and they were reaching out for healing, and deliverance, and salvation. And God was uh, touching them instantly. And I would wake up, you know, crying, and my grandma would say, That's not for now. Remember the prophecy, it's for the end times. We're in the end times. So it is now. Yes. <laughs> okay. Uh, your son, out of nowhere, six years old, Justin, yeah. has. Bacterial spinal meningitis, no brain activity. I checked with my personal physician and I said, Doctor, if a six year old has this bacterial spinal meningitis uh, with no brain activity, uh, what is the chance of him surviving? He says, None. But if a miracle were to happen, he'd survive, but he'd have his, he wouldn't have his brain. Mm. That's what he said. What happened to your son? Tell me. Well, uh, when Justin rolled out of the bed on Halloween night, he had been to school that day and got a fever and was taken to the doctor and came home. And just in the middle of the night, he rolled out of the bed. I heard him hit the floor, picked him up, carried him to the hospital. They sent him to two more that night. He was in a fetal position. He couldn't see, walk, talk, hear, do nothing. He was having convulsions. We took him. He ended up in ICU. They called in the greatest minds in the world. And they said that the bacterial spinal meningitis had caused him now to have no brain waves, and that everybody that had been in contact with him had to be treated medically, including me and my wife. It was so contagious. It was the very, bacteria. and people were dying huh. from this thing. And they said that we, we don't give him any chance, zero. And, you know, many days passed by, and it was that way. And so uh, I'm sitting in the hospital, and when all the doctors gave up, said, Every one of them gave up and said that we, there's just nothing else to do. We've unplugged him from the, the breathing machine, the ventilator. There's no brain waves. There's no movement. There's no change after many days. I told my wife, I said, as she sat in that glass room, I said, I'm going home. I've got to be alone. And I went home that night and I was sitting in the bedroom. I was crying. I said, God, why? You weren't the only one crying. You yeah. told me that all the staff there was Everybody crying. was crying. Every, yeah. He was such a cute little six-year-old boy. And that we're all crying and crying. And I'm crying. I said, God, you know, uh, why did you allow this? I mean, why did you do this? And God said, you know, in my spirit, I heard, I didn't do this. The enemy attacked your child. And you, you, need, to get, you need to get right with me. And I began to cry out in repentance. And when I did, 
all of a sudden the room lit up like 10 billion light bulbs and Jesus was right in front of me. (laughs) Right in front of me. And and the thing that was so exciting, the thing was, I, I thought, you know, if you, Jesus ever appeared, you just talk to him. You can't move. The power was so strong. I was, I was wide awake, and this glory is hitting me, and it's like this light is so bright, you can't hardly see. I mean, I'm trying to see him, and I thought, what's he going to do? I couldn't move. He says, go to church. And, and then I saw this love coming out of his eyes. Well, he's gone. One minute. He was only with me one minute, 60 supernatural seconds. He gave me an instruction. What do you think I did? I jumped up, got in the car, ran out of the driveway, went down. I was going to my church that I had left, you know, a year ago. It was an hour away. But you know what? As I turned the corner, there was a little church on the corner, and there was a man standing there trying to lock the door. It wouldn't lock. He lived in another city. His coat was blowing in the wind. I pulled in and said, can I use your church? He says, who are you? And I said, my son is critically ill. He's at the point of death. I said, no hope. And he said, well, I'd have done been gone, but this door won't lock. And so he said, go ahead. I went down, got on my knees, repented before God. The Lord spoke to me and said, Justin is healed. He will be named the miracle boy of the hospital. And you will go out and pray for the sick. And I took off. He said, go, you got to go and prophesy this now. Tell them people. So wait, I, wait a second. Now, <laughs> the staff's crying. <laughs> There's no brain waves going on. And he's supposed to go in the hospital and say, my son's a miracle boy. He's going to get up and walk out. Yes. Uh, when we come back, let's find out what happened. <laughs> <laughs>